That is the viral keratitis. Okay, and it is caused by herpes simplex virus. Only the herpes viruses affect the cornea. Most of the other viruses don't. So it can affect the cornea in two different types. It can be only an epithelial keratitis or it can go deep into the stroma and cause a stromal keratitis. Okay, so epithelial and stromal HSV keratitis is present in cornea. The epithelial keratitis is characterized by dendritic ulcers. Please don't forget this. This word in your questions, you see the word dendrite. That is a true dendrite. See, we have seen a pseudodendrite in acanthamoeba. So, the dendrites that occur in viral keratitis are called two true dendrites. Look at this picture. Such beautiful dendrites you can see. Branching pattern of the ulcer. So, this branching pattern of the ulcer, like this, or say it's like this, okay. This branching dendritic ulcer further progresses into a geographical ulcer. That is most of it becomes like the map of a country, then ultimately resulting in loss of corneal sensation. This is an important clinical feature. Okay. How, what you can do is whenever you suspect a viral corneal ulcer, you can just touch the patient's cornea with a wisp of cotton. In the normal eye, the corneal sensations will be preserved. He'll blink his eye. However, this is absent in the eye with the herpes keratitis. Okay. And there are two types of uh, keratitis that I would like to share with you now. The first one is the neuroparalytic keratitis. As the name suggests, it occurs due to the palsy of seventh nerve. Okay. Try to remember here, seventh nerve is neuroparalytic. So what happens here is it is a kind of an exposure keratitis. That is the cornea is exposed to the uh, external environment because, why, why is it exposed? Because the facial nerve that is the seventh nerve supplies the orbicularis. And we have learnt earlier that orbicularis is the only muscle that closes the eye. So now when the lid that closes the eye is paralyzed, obviously the cornea is exposed to the environment causing exposure keratitis. This is termed as neuroparalytic keratitis. It is seventh nerve palsy. Okay. Now another condition similar to this but much different is neurotrophic keratitis. And this is due to your fifth cranial nerve palsy fifth nerve palsy okay it is called neurotrophic keratitis that is trigeminal nerve now these two can be getting confusing in your exam so i would like to give you an easy way to remember see t is present in trigeminal nerve and neurotrophic as well so trigeminal trophic tr both tr trigeminal trophic so neurotrophic due to trigeminal that is fifth cranial nerve palsy we know that the fifth cranial nerve carries sensations to the cornea so this is lost in this keratitis so what happens is the patient cannot feel anything even if you uh, if, if there is a foreign body on his cornea he, he does not realize that it is present and it is uh, present in there impinged for a very long duration ultimately resulting in a corneal ulcer and that is about neuroparalytic and neurotrophic keratitis now let's go deeper and look at the uh, stromal keratitis caused by the herpes virus so you can see in this picture so the stroma is very hazy all over here okay it forms a disc of edema over here and it is uh, we have discussed just now a herpetic stromal ulcer now what you have to understand over here not it is not an infective condition it is not infective it is an immunological reaction of the body okay it is an immune response towards the uh, infection that is causing your disciform keratitis or a disc of edema in the stroma and obviously because there is no infection over here and I have told you earlier that one type of keratitis you can use steroid and this is the answer for that question. The only type of keratitis where you use 
steroids is the diskiform keratitis and the reason is that because it is an immunological reaction and not an infective condition okay please remember this it can be asked in your exam the only form of keratitis in which steroids can be prescribed is the viral diskiform keratitis and of course your true dendrites are formed in this condition let's look at the herpes zoster that affects the eye we know that herpes zoster is the name of the disease whereas the virus causing this disease is varicella zoster now we are familiar with this that it causes chicken pox when we are young to all the most of the children get chicken pox and this virus remains dormant within the nerve roots and whenever there is an immunological compromisation this uh, virus reactivates from its dormant state and when it is occurring in a young patient you should suspect a uh, hiv in that patient see certain people uh, such as the old people or those with um, uh, cancer chemotherapy going on they are obviously chem uh, immunocompromised however if it occurs in a young patient that is herpes zoster in a young patient you should immediately think about hiv now an important and very famous question very very frequently asked in your exams is the hutchinson's rule now look at this picture what does this hutchinson rule do is that it predicts whether the herpes virus will affect the cornea or the eye or not in this condition we call it as herpes zoster ophthalmicus if the vesicle that is the herpetic vesicle is present on the tip of the nose like this it indicates that the eye is infected as well and that you have to treat the eye as well this is the famous hutchinson's rule why is it that why what is the relation between the nose and the eye because both the tip of the nose and the eye are supplied by the same branch of nasociliary nerve nasociliary nose and your eye so that is the reason behind hutchinson's rule and this condition indicates that you have to start the treatment within 72 hours of your diagnosis and any failure to do this leads to a very very painful condition uh, it is a very excruciating pain it is called post herpetic neuralgia it occurs usually one or two months after the uh, subsiding of the disease if you do not treat within 72 hours it leads to post herpetic neuralgia okay so another form over here is the numular keratitis by numular i mean coin shaped please look at this picture all of these coin shaped opacities characterized the numular uh, keratitis seen in herpes zoster also here again you're going to see pseudodendrites okay these are how the pseudodendrites appear now a few important points uh, in your exam point of view just to for a quick revision pseudodendrites we have uh, learned all these three conditions now they are seen in herpes zoster contact lens wearers and acanthamoeba pseudodendrites are seen in herpes zoster uh, contact lens wearers and acanthamoeba okay hello everyone this is dr sai suguna your mentor for ophthalmology at medico app now thanks for watching the video now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app the trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below